Good morning, everyone. And welcome to First Congregational Church of Stratford. We always begin by saying that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today we celebrate um, one of the three great holy days of the church year. They're Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. I'm saddened that it's on the same day as we would celebrate Memorial Day because we do want to remember those who gave their lives for our country and, uh, and we will. But the focus will be on the Holy Spirit and the four candidates who are being confirmed today after, um, after a, a full year of working on what it means to follow Christ and making a commitment today to do that. So we're so glad you could join us for this celebration. Let's now prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. Good morning. This indeed is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we want to um, especially uh, recognize those who have served our country in the United States Navy. And uh, I personally would like to uh, mention my uh, sons in laws father, who was my friend, and served in Korea. And of course, uh, we, all these people we want to uh, remember and to uh, thank, okay? <laughs> and um, a word about the Navy hymn, which I'm going to play on the harmonica. Uh, these are the words. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm has blown us the restless wave, who bid the mighty oceans deep its own appointed limits keep. O oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. That really says it all for the Navy, doesn't it? Pretty much. And that was written by uh, William Whiting, 1860, and music by John Dykes, 1861.
please join me in the call to worship. Come to us, powerful God. Ignite the fire of your spirit within our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. May your spirit blow upon us like a fresh spring breeze. Come, Holy Spirit, come. May your spirit fill us and equip us for ministry so that your love, peace, and justice may fill the earth. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill our hearts today. Our hymn of praise is number 253. Spirit, come to spell our sadness. All those who are able, please stand in body or in spirit. Before. that it was written by one of our former pastors, Joshua Levitt, who became a leader in the abolitionist movement, was a, a part of the Amistad Committee, and as my professor in seminary always said, it, and he was very involved in the Second Great Awakening and Revival. As my professor used to say, it's not a real awakening or revival unless it leads to social transformation which happened with this man. All right, thank you. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God of wind and word and fire, we bless your name this day. We thank, thank you for sending the light and power of your Holy Spirit into our lives. We give thanks for all the gifts, great and small, that you have poured out upon your children. Let the wind of God blow upon us and awaken these dead bones. Let the word of prophecy call these bones to rise. Let the breath of God breathe new life into each of us as we gather in the name of Jesus, the Anointed One.
Would you join me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin? We're on there. Merciful God, you knitted together our inmost being, and you know our deepest desires, worries, and fears. The journey is off the turn. We intend to follow you, but we are surrounded by the temptation to follow the ways of the world. We are tempted to follow power instead of love, might instead of goodness, popularity instead of faithfulness. The way is often unclear to us, and it is easier to follow the crowd and ignore what you teach us. Remind us that it is your spirit that sustains us. Forgive us when we stray from you, and help us to live as followers of your way. Hear the good news. God knows our failures and our, and our doubts, and still God loves us. Every time we fall, Jesus is waiting to pick us up, not counting our sins, but calling us to continue the journey with him. Let us rise up now and follow, knowing that we are forgiven and accepted by God. Spirit of the Living God.
We ask that you would not only fill us, but you would come like a mighty wind, crack open the doors of this building, break through the windows that separate us, and let the wind of God blow on us in such a way that it breaks open any hardened hearts. That the life of your spirit might come in and nourish. And as Jeremiah said, prophesied, turn our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Turn our eyes to see you in everything, in all creation. Use our hands and our arms to embrace one another and to reach out to those who are in need and to include those who have been excluded. Holy Spirit, come upon this church and every church in our world. Let the reality of the risen Christ cry out in our hearts so that we can say, Abba, Abba, Daddy, Father, Mother, Beloved. God, we pray as well this morning that your Spirit would work in us that we might reach out to those who are hurting. That we might remember this morning those who have lost loved ones in war. That we might honor those, but also minister to those and minister to those who didn't die in war but were so profoundly affected that it's difficult for them to continue to live life as they did. Those who were wounded terribly, those who were wounded in their souls, God, let your spirit heal them. And we pray, oh God, we pray for the day when there will be no more wars. When instruments of war will be turned into instruments of peace. When all the money that is spent on defending ourselves and other nations defending themselves and attacking each other would come to an end we would realize the futility of it all and that we would work together for the healing of this planet. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us show our faith by giving to God as an act of worship, that we, we may be a part of God's great work in our world. The offering will now be received.
dedication. Gracious God, you call us to let go of the things we have cling to and to trust in you. Accept these offerings, we pray, that they may be used to bring your love and presence into our community. Would you turn with me to our next hymn, hymn number 249, Spirit.
This morning's gospel reading comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 27. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. A little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Begot, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. close love there's something that I want to take a look at together are you in a place where you can hear me because I want you to really soak in what I have to say I come offering transformation I come full of love and I so deeply want you to experience for yourself what is so often only talked about or imagined my full presence to all things my part in your being and your part in my being i want to clean you up cut off what no longer serves you and show you how deeply and truly everything is enjoined to me what's yours to do is going to sound simplistic but it's hard trust me i know People tend to get in their own way when it comes to connection. So what I am asking you is to open, to show me where it hurts. Because right there is where I come in. I am meeting you sore to sore, wound to wound, to nourish you by the intimacy of my own blood and guide you into the mystery and miracle of my deep healing way. I want to bring you closer into me. I want you to experience me and my love firsthand, source to soul. I want you to know that you are soaked in me. You are within my love everywhere, always, and my love is never exhausted. So share the spirit of it freely. Give without worry or desperation. Let love move among you, soul to soul. My heart is set on you. I am here, active and present. I am yours and you are mine. I will never leave you. So trust, remain, rest assured. Be still and know. You are within my love, everywhere, always source to soul, and my love is never exhausted.
such. There are such critical things that I want to share with you today. As she began this video, uh, I want to ask each of you, my confirmants, the same thing that she asked. And that is, are you in a place where you can hear me? Because what I want to say to you is so important, and I mean it. Are you? It's what God wants for each of you. And what I in my spirit so want for you and for everyone here as well. I want you to know for yourself. As Christ was saying through her voice. I, am, I come offering love. I want you to experience for yourself. So that so what. I want you to experience for yourself what is so often only believed or talked about. And I believe that each of you have experienced that love in one way or another through this past year. I learned that in your faith statements. That love is, and that love is what makes the difference between having a religion or having a living faith. And that is to experience Christ's love for yourself. Because when you do, you will be able to see God's presence everywhere and in all things. A few years ago, I asked Eric to sing this song. And the name of it was called, Everything is Holy Now. And he questioned it because he had a point. The person almost seemed to be saying in that song that, um, that, you know, church is not the only place that you can find God, but you can find miracles everywhere in creation and in the world. And the thing is, is that that's only half true. And what I mean by that is when you come to church and you worship, it's then that God gives you eyes to find God in everything and in every situation. In every problem that you have in school. Every challenge that you will ever face in life. Every time you are hurting. You will find God in the beautiful blossoms of spring in this time of year. In the beautiful colors of fall. When the snow is falling, and of course, when the wind blows against your face, the wind of her spirit blowing softly upon you, ready to help you in your journey. And the thing is, God is not calling you to be perfect. God is not even calling you to be good. As the film says, what God wants more than anything else is to transform you. Do you know what the word transformation means? Well, the best explanation I can give you is what happens to a caterpillar when it turns into a butterfly. That's what God does in us when we look to God. God wants to clean you up. God wants to help you cut away the things that are harmful to you and to others in your life. God wants to heal the wounds in your heart and your soul and wipe away every tear from your eyes so that you can take that sigh, that sense that <sighs> everything's all all is well. God wants you to know the deep intimacy that we read about in our scripture today. That through the Holy Spirit, God wants to intimately commune with you. As the woman said, come close, love. Come close, love. 
You see, none of us will ever know the depth of that love unless we continually come close. We worship. We pray. We seek God. And I want that for all of you. And I promise that if you do this, no matter what happens, no matter how alone you may ever feel in your life or abandoned by others, you will always know in the depth of your being that God has not abandoned you. God has not left you as an orphan. I know that for my own life. At a time when I felt like everyone had turned their back on me, there was one who was still there to comfort me. It was Christ who put his arms around wound to wound, who nourished me with his blood, who kissed the bruises and held me tenderly. Besides that, friends, knowing that love at such a deep place, all that God asks of you then is to love everyone you meet the way that God loves you. Whether it's your friends, or the friend that betrayed you. Or the bullies. The teachers. Your family. Uh, the world. Love them all as God loves you. Forgive them as God has forgiven you. And never give up on any of them. In the same way that God will never give up on you. That should be the end. But it isn't. And the reason I say that is I've been doing this for 40 years. And I know there's one other thing I have to mention. And this is the hard part. You see, I've come, I've, after 40 years, I've seen so many just sitting there like you. So earnest in their commitment. So much enthusiasm and determination to follow Christ and to be a, a member of this church. But I've learned that often that love grows cold. And then you end up settling for a religion rather than a relationship. And church simply becomes a duty that you have to fulfill rather than the passionate intimacy you once knew with God. Jesus once said, many are called, but few are chosen. But I think we misinterpreted that. I think what he really said was, many are called, but few have chosen. Jesus told a parable about planting seeds. And the seed being the word of God, and you were the ground on which it was planted. You see, God's spirit was planted in your hearts on the day that you were baptized. And today it comes to full a bloom in your confession of Christ as Lord and Savior. That there's so many things that can destroy that spiritual life. That plant. The enthusiasm you feel today may one day be looked upon as, well, just a fad. A youthful stage that you went through and you think back and you go, well, what was I thinking? Or what you find following Christ is not always popular and sometimes difficult. When you begin to miss worship for many justifiable reasons. When God is no longer the most important thing in your life. I didn't say church. I said God. When your popularity, your sports, your job, your extracurricular activities are more important, the seed can die. The plant can die. It constantly needs to be watered through worship, through talking to God daily, through study, 
through helping the helpless, through simply the fellowship of other believers here. I find it interesting that no one ever questions anyone anymore if they miss church because of a myriad of reasons, whether it's sports or theater or music or work, especially work. Well, I have to work on Sunday. Well, okay, that's, that's really what's most important. But God has to be the most important thing in your life. I want you, you to follow Christ in such a way that you hear him say one day, well done, good and faithful servant. I want us, you to follow him in such a way that you make a difference in the world and know the wonderful adventure that God has for you. That nothing, that nothing can be more important than nurturing that plant, that seed within. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And yes, there will be times when you fail, when you stumble in your faith, when you deny him like Peter, when like the prodigal you just simply say, I got to get away from all this, and you walk away. But believe me, friends, Christ will always be there like the shepherd searching for the lost sheep, ready to pick you up in, their, in her arms, to embrace you and heal the hurts. Or like the father who runs to embrace this child who has returned home. Christ will always be more ready to forgive you, to accept you, and to embrace you than you will to come to him. He wants to grab you then by the hand, pick you up, forget what happened in the past and say, come on, let's go. Because I have so much more in store for you. But beginning tomorrow, or perhaps this afternoon, it will all be up to you. To continue to say yes to the one that you are making these promises to today. We would like to invite to come forward those who wish to affirm their baptism by being confirmed. After your name is called, please come forward. Alexander Arcos. Nathan Carano. Scott Azaric. Haley Fry. Friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These young people have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of the church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. I have some questions to ask you now, and I would ask you to just answer with, I do. Do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Do you promise to renounce the powers of sin and evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of Jesus as best you are able? Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in the Christian faith and be faithful members of the church of Jesus Christ 
celebrating Christ's presence and furthering his mission to all the world? If so, say, I promise with the help of God. Let us all stand now and affirm our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? This is the part now where you say the prayers of the candidates. Oh God. You may be seated. Would you join me now in the prayer, our prayer together? Dear God, through the powerful wind of the Holy Spirit, breathe upon our confirmants this day. May their vows they express bind them to you and to your church with gifts of faithful service, bold witness, and constant love. Bless, guide, and direct them their families, and our church family, so that together we may bless one another and others with life-giving, spirit-filled ministry. Come, Holy Spirit, be our God. Amen. Okay, this is the point where I'm going to ask Alex to come and kneel, and you three are going to come over here. And I'm inviting up now Alex's parents, and any family members, and also his mentor and any deacons, to lay hands on him as we confirm the Holy Spirit in his life. And the deacons, of course. Please come and put your hand on Let us pray. Oh God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, you have accepted your servant Alex Arcos into your family. Nourish in him the power of your Holy Spirit that he may serve you all the days of his life. Amen. You may stand now. <coughs> Except the deacons, please stay up here. Um, now I'd at, like to ask Nathan Corona to come in the world. And his family to come forward. Anyone from his family who would like to come to lay hands on him. And his mentor, of course. of Jesus Christ, you have accepted your servant Nathan Parano into your family and into your arms. Nourish him with the power of your Holy Spirit now that he may serve you all the days of his life.
There's room on this side too. And there's my big things that come forward. Oh God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, you have accepted your servant, Scott and Zarek, into your arms, into this family of faith, into your heart. Nourish him and the power of the Holy Spirit, that he may serve you all the days of his life. Amen. And now we would like to ask Haley Fry to come forward. And we would like to ask her family to come forward now as we lay hands on her and her mentor and the deacons. Let us pray. O oh God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, you have accepted your servant, Haley Fry, through the water of baptism, into your arms and into your heart. For you were in her and she is in you and you are one. We ask now that you would nourish her with the power of your Holy Spirit, that she may serve you all the days of her life. Amen. And right now, I'd just like to ask all my deacons, I mean, deacons, all my confirmants to come just right up here as we have a prayer. Let us pray. We rejoice, O oh merciful God, with these four young Christians in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the Spirit's power to awaken in us to a new revelation and to inspire us to venture into the fullness of life. We give you thanks that they have been moved to affirm their baptism. Help them to live not for themselves, but for Jesus Christ. And all those whom Christ loves, keep them steady and abounding in hope, never giving up and pressing toward the goal of life with you in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We celebrate your presence in the household of faith. Before signing the covenant, I have one more question to ask you. Do you promise to participate in the life and family, life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and, enlist, and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and world. If so, say, we promise with the help of God. On behalf of, no, not yet. This is the time when you sign the covenant. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to come over here. This book has the names of everyone who has joined the church or been through confirmation process. They didn't date it at the beginning, but it's gotta be from the 1960s. And so maybe someday when you're a confirmation mentor, you can show your confirmand your name in here, as I did with Alex. So you're going to sign right here.
Let us, the members of First Congregational Church of Stratford, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We promise to you our continuing friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Well, in the name of Jesus Christ, and on behalf of all the members here, I want to offer you the hand of fellowship and welcome to the church. So proud of each and every one. As the senior deacon, on behalf of all of the members of the First Congregational Church of Stratford, I want to welcome you into this family of faith and tell you that your journey does not end here. This is just the beginning, and we can't wait to watch you grow in faith and see what great things that God has in store for you and the Holy Spirit will compel you to do. On behalf of the church, we'd like you to have this certificate, which tells you Thank you, um, which um, commemorates this day. And we have one more thing for you. One of our church members, Ted Pert, who is, is a deacon, has created these, handmade these crosses um, from, what wood? Black? D yes, um, from black walnut wood. And um, these are to be kept with you in your pocket or somewhere on your person or in your book bag so that you can always remember that Christ is with you every step of the way, wherever you go. Welcome. Let's all give them a hand. Would you rise in body or spirit as we sing our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord, hymn number 452.
be seated. Before we say the Common Commission, I'd just like to invite everyone to Upper Packard Hall after the service for a reception for our new members. Now please join me in the Common Commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.